You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You get that blood in your eyes and you play with heart. Check this out. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton and all the high school teams around our state are now into conference play. Dreaming of conference championships and playoff bids. And in the next 30 minutes we'll show you highlights of some of the best games from around our state last night here on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Plus we'll have the pregame pep talks, be in a couple of coaches dressing rooms before the games and show you some postgame reaction. The Harrison Goblins with a big win last night at Bologna will show you what they had to say after that win. All of that plus the latest Hooton's rankings, of course, as we show you the top 20 for all four classifications. That's all coming up in the next 30 minutes, and we'll show you Class 5A highlights as we get started next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Hooton's Arkansas Football is brought to you by... Two years ago, the talk of Class 5A football was the Bryant Hornets, and it looks like they could be the buzz of 2001 as well. Last night, playing host to Sheridan. Bryant junior quarterback Lance Parker, he was on fire. He finds A.J. Nixon for the touchdown here. Parker passed for 233 yards in the first half. And Bryant led 42 to nothing at the break. Next week, undefeated Bryant plays host to undefeated Pine Bluff. Should be a showdown in Saline County next Friday. Final score from last night, Hornets 42, winning the Sheridan 7. Just a little deeper in Saline County, it was undefeated Benton playing host to winless Texarkana. Benton quarterback Brian Greer completed 19 of 30 passes for 272 yards, including an early touchdown and a 7-0 lead for Benton. But Texarkana would big play Benton to rally. Razorback Jamone Howard tied the score with this 60-yard touchdown run, weaving his way through Benton's secondary, and he will finally dive into the end zone to tie it late in the first quarter. Howard would finish with 210 yards rushing on the night early in the second quarter. Benton fumbles the reverse handoff on the far side of the field, and Justin Willis scoops it up. He's going to fight off a tackler and go all the way for a defensive touchdown, breaking Benton's back. Texarkana wins its first game of the year and beats Benton for the 10th straight time. Final score, Razorbacks 21, Benton 10. In Cabot last night, the Panthers opened 5A East play against the improved Mills Comets. First quarter action, Cavett leads seven to nothing, and this is sophomore Chris Robertson getting great blocking from Ryan Bales, lowering his shoulder and scoring the touchdown. Robertson had a huge first night, 125 yards and four touchdowns by halftime for the sophomore. Senior Joey Conrad also scored on a running play late in the second quarter, and this one was a blowout. Final score, Cavett 48, Mills zero. Staying in the East Conference, Sylvan Hills and Jacksonville. Sylvan Hills trailed 13 to seven at halftime, but ties it with its only offensive touchdown of the night. Chad Brown pulling his way into the end zone. That made it 13-13. Brown would also score the winning touchdown, playing defense. With four minutes left in the game, he scooped up a fumble and returned it 88 yards to break Jacksonville's heart. Final score, Sylvan Hills 19, Red Devils 13. In Conway, it was the Wampus Cats and Little Rock Central playing in a key 5A Central matchup. Conway's John Duhart, hey, the guy was held to minus one yard rushing last week at Van Buren, but he had a little trouble blowing through Bernie Cox's boys last night. He scored on the game's third play, going 39 yards for the touchdown. On the next series, Conway goes to the air. Dennis Jones rolls out, finds sophomore Peyton Hillis, 220-pound sophomore, rumbling and rumbling, finally stumbling, and he gets pushed out of bounds after a 49-yard gain. Duhart would score from there and finish with 18 carries for 244 yards and six touchdowns for Duhart last night. Central All-America tailback Dedrick Poole tried to keep it close, diving into the end zone for a score here. But Conway kept running it, averaging almost nine yards per carry, and the Wampus Cats improved to two and two on the year, handing Central its first loss of the season. Final score, Wampus Cats 47, Central 21. Parkview and Hall kicked off conference play last night at Little Rock Scott Field, and it was all Parkview early. David Kennebrew smothers Hall quarterback Ron Dukes. Parkview led 28 to nothing early, but Hall would score on this pitch play from Dukes to Quincy Caldwell. 
Quincy gets in the end zone, but it wasn't enough as Hall remains winless and Parkview continues to show progress. Final score, Patriots 49, Hall 12. Catholic and Mountain Home met at War Memorial Stadium. And Rocket quarterback Mark Eversman put the Rockets ahead early, turning this busted play into a touchdown with a 37-yard bomb to Vince DeAndre. Mountain Home would come back, tie it with Justin Nolan scoring from two yards out. But Eversman kept going, came right back for the Rockets, scrambling and heaving it again, this time to Cody Yeoman. It's good for a 43-yard touchdown and a 14-7 lead. Mountain Home responds with this 46-yard pass. It's Brian Maddox to Kenny Miller, but the Bombers failed to score on three trips inside the 10-yard line last night. Two interception and the fumble into the end zone, and Catholic wins it. Final score, Rockets 29, Mountain Home 13. Hooten's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Arkansas Heart Hospital. Panthers didn't have time to get comfortable last night playing host to Siloam Springs in the 4A West opener for both teams. Siloam Springs jumped out to a 21-0 lead in the second quarter with the inspired play of senior quarterback Chris Williams. He finds junior receiver Randy Rodriguez in the flat. Randy makes a good move before Greenbrier's Brian Robinson brings him down. But the Greenbrier defense steps up with Rodney Rhodes stripping Siloam Springs of the ball and teammate Micah Cox recovers. With just one yard rushing in the first half, Greenbrier's Clint Wallace goes to the air, hitting Dusty Gross on the in route right here. Wallace saw something he liked on the right side of the Siloam defense with completions to sophomore Brandon Moreland and then to junior split in Ricky Beck. Panthers passing the ball, but Wallace goes to the well once too often as Siloam's linebacker Clint Woodruff tips the pass and teammate Nate Lubach makes the sliding interception. The Siloam Springs offense continue to roll in a route. Final score, Siloam 56, Greenbrier 0. A lot of miscues tonight at quarterback. I was just thinking, you know, everything that possibly could go bad has gone bad, and I can't do any worse. So 
don't get nervous and just, just put it in. Just do what I've done hundreds of times. Just put it through the uprights. And here is Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings. The Hope Bobcats stay on top. Hope continues to beat opponents by double digits. Last night, they knocked out Arkadelphia. Alma's at number two after a big win over Moralton. They're followed by the Seminoles, the Billies, and the Yellow Jackets. The second five starts with Stuttgart and Watson Chapel. Those two are set for a showdown next Friday. Cersei's at number eight, then it's Fair and Moralton. Arkadelphia starts the second ten. They're followed by the Golden Goblins and Pulaski Robinson, which is 4-0 with some impressive wins so far. Greenwood's 14, then it's Magnolia and Whitehall. Crossett's at 17. The Greyhounds are 18. Green County Tech at 19. And Arkansas football brought to you by Sonic. Okay, defensively, hey team, big kid. Okay, D backs, you linebackers, stay low on him. Okay, take his legs out. Uh, let's wrap up good and fly the football. Okay, uh, other than that, guys, we just gotta go out there and play hard, keep our mouths shut, play good uh, football, and we'll be all right. Okay, no. Mouthing, no doing that kind of stuff. Let's just play our kind of football and let's have fun doing it. That's first-year Clinton head coach Ronald Dufresne warning his Yellow Jackets about Hoxie's quarterback, Cy Phillips, and for good reason, as the surprising Yellow Jackets had their hands full with fellow AAA unbeaten team Hoxie last night in Clinton. Phillips got loose for 25 yards on the Mustangs' first possession before Clinton's Charles Coleman brings him down on the next play. Class 3A's number five ranked team, Pulaski Academy, took on Dover last night in a key five AAA contest at Bruin Stadium in West Little Rock. The big question last night was, could PA get fired up after a record-shattering victory over Shallow Christian last week? The answer was easy. Pulaski Academy led 28-7 to by halftime. Dover was trying to respond in the third quarter, first possession of the third quarter. Pirates top running back Seth Smith slips outside for some good yardage, but most of the night Smith and the Pirates spent 